Hey, what's up, Liron here, and in this episode of Painting Masters, we'll review works by Igor Dubovoy. This is an artist I've been following for quite some time now on Instagram, and whenever his paintings pop up, I'm just amazed by them. And if there's one word I can use to really describe his work, that'll be control. So he has this excellent way of controlling the medium and getting the result he wants, and it's a very subtle, um, fine control of the all of aspects of watercolor painting. As you'll see, I think he has an interesting approach uh, to the atmosphere and mood and how to convey them in his work. So it's not necessarily 100% realistic, but it is quite realistic, more realistic than many of, of the other artists that I've showed, shown so far. So I hope you're gonna enjoy this one. Let's get started. So I wanna get started with one painting that really shows off the abilities uh, and realism. Um, I just, what I wanna do this time is maybe focus on one aspect I really like uh, about every painting and how it showcases um, his talent, skills, and and I guess body of work. So for me, this one is definitely about that realism. Uh, a lot of the details in the water is something that's actually very hard to achieve from experience. I know this. Um, everything just seems to be a little more subdued and the color scheme, it can be very misleading knowing how to represent this kind of a thing. Then when you add up on top of that all of the uh, texture, you get all these greens and mossy feeling to it. And then you get these beautiful highlights that probably some of these were lifted off. Just a lot that goes on into making um, such a painting. And I wanted to include that first because of that realism factor. But let's move on and I'm going to show you a couple of other things. So for this one, for example, uh, I like the other aspect. And by the way, these are uh, a mix of different um, mediums. For example, this one I'm pretty sure is oils. Uh, while the previous one was watercolor, I believe. Um, so you will see a mix of mediums here. What I like about this one is actually the inventiveness. Ruth is trying to get out. I'm open the door for her. Uh, but in any case, what I like about this one is that mood and atmosphere and inventiveness. You really get a sense of uh, the, the weather, um, the, the time of day, the atmosphere. Look at all these uh, cars and the empty highway, very large, or maybe just road. I don't know, I like this. And, and if you look at the clouds, they're fantastic. I love this kind of clouds. This, if you look at the top half of the painting, it almost has a feeling of one of these old uh, biblical paintings, which I find really impressive. Um, they really suck you into the atmosphere of the place and I don't know, they're just, they have this air of impressiveness to them. It's hard to explain. And then when you look at the middle half, you realize it is contemporary, but it's just beautiful. These, uh, the snow flying off the car's tires. That's really, a really beautiful one. Uh, here's another one. What I like about this one in particular, obviously look at the sky. It's just insane. The level of control and getting the effect to look like you planned for it to look. Um, two more things I will say. One is look at the mast and its transparency. You can actually feel its uh, translucence, I guess, or transparency. You can feel like this uh, this part, it overlaps here, so it's darker. It overlaps with the part that's facing towards us and then the one that curves kind of behind it. Uh, so that's a really, really cool effect. And then obviously the, these sparks on the water surface, just beautiful painting. I love the subtle color scheme, not too many bright colors. Everything is kind of subdued, but then the mass really pops out as a as a one of the warmer colors of the painting. So really spectacular work. Um, here's another one. Oh, this I'm biased towards these kinds of um, of views in a way because and this is very different from what I usually show you. It's a, it's a much more uh, literal representation of the trees. He actually did every leaf almost. You can see here. Um, not a lot of simplification necessarily here, but. What I love about these kinds of scenes, and, and I am happy to finally show one like this, um, is the, the light and shadow condition. So I'm a big fan of um, these days when you get a lot of sunlit ground, but then the sky is full of clouds. I love this combination. I don't know why. It's something about, you know, the ground is really bright and the sky behind it is very dark and, and m maybe there's a storm in the distance or something like this. You see this a lot in cities as well. Like the buildings are very sunlit, so they're warm, they're orangey, yellow, and then the sky is really uh, like a storm, like blue or black. And I love this combination. Uh, so really, really nice work. Here's one I just have had to include it because of the look at the control again, uh, the softness in the background 
and then the the sharpness in the foreground and it's these things that make a painting look beautiful and fix the impression for us the viewer it makes us understand this is the focal point this is what we should focus on the background is just supporting for that and even the bottom section look at how the the figures kind of transition into this uh, field of wheat maybe um just a really good way of controlling the medium to di direct our attention. Obviously, the, you know, I'm not talking much about the emotion and, and all of that, the energy of the painting, the subject itself. Uh, the warm, the, this warmth here is genius in the beanie. I love how it works with the background. Now, if you look at the background is, itself, or even this one, like the other beanie that is kind of gray, look at how much colors, uh, how many colors you can see in that. So nothing is really gray. You have bouncing light off of every element of the scene. So you get a bit of that warmth here, a bit of that redness there, a bit of blue, just very, very good. Uh, and if you look at the background, look at all this control. I love when people are able to preserve, for example, this uh, yellow here within the blue. The yellow preserved its uh, independence in a way and it's not uh, fully mixed with the blue around it. It's not green, it's actual yellow. Uh, I love these types of scenes and the nice effects here, you know, the salt or whatever he was dropping on it. Uh, all of these blades of wheat. I don't know if that's probably, probably masking uh, fluid, but I'm not sure. It could be uh, a different technique. Some of it could be scratching. Uh, just really nice. Here's another one just to show you a bit of a more uh, simplified representation uh, of this cityscape. Uh, you can see this has a more illustrative quality to it, meaning the... I would say the colors and light and shadow aren't as realistic. It's more represent, rep, well, more of an illustrative representation in a way. But I do want to direct your attention to this um, uh, background uh, ridge or mountain. All of these lights, the, these are so cool. I love this atmosphere. I love this feeling. This is among my favorite views in a way because it is. You can tell that it's cold, maybe a bit snowy, and, and it's night scene. We don't have snow here, so anytime I see a snowy scene especially cityscapes where it's really nicely lit. Uh, I find these scenes very attractive. I love these kinds of you know, views. I don't know, just lovely. And the yellows and blues and reds, all of the, the colors work in harmony really well. Um, let's see. So this one I love for one specific reason. That's the uh, reflections here. And even here, like look at the patterns in the water. This is insane. Look at all of these very loose... Um, just it's it's simply reflections in the ripples and it's probably reflections of all of these details the linear details maybe the masts maybe the riggings the ropes all of it really um uh contorts and distorts uh is distorted by the water's ripples and the surface just such a cool effect uh and it's not necessarily as hard as you'd think this is more similar to drawing you're actually drawing these lines uh, it's just a very fun effect to get. And also one more thing, look at the water and how natural it feels, even though the colors are completely different in the foreground and background. In the foreground, we have more of a cerulean French ultramarine feeling, while in the background, it's more of a turquoise and green. And look at how natural it looks, this progression, because maybe here is more sunlit, so you can see through the water to the surface, and here's a little more reflective of the sky. These effects are really nice to get. And look at all of these, again, ropes and, and wires and riggings. Look at the beauty and the negative um, negativity between the dark on light and light on dark. Where there's a shadow from behind, he makes these white, which is really, really cool. Just beautiful, beautiful painting. Uh, here's one I thought was really cool, Leon and Matilda from the, from the film. I think it's called Leon, I'm not sure. But I just love this because you don't very often see um, artists, um, where renowned artists paint scenes from movies, at least I have it, so I love this one. And look at the lens here, this is so cool, like this gradual transition. And I think it really captured the, the, the characters from the movie. It's been like ages since I watched it, but just really, really cool. Look at the shadow uh, on his face, not necessarily cold, you know, not necessarily cool colors. This is orange shadows. Uh, here's a bit of red or uh, brown red. You know, just beautiful. And, of course, always this transition from sharp, rough edges and then smooth transitions. I love this combination. Uh, and I'm going to have a surprise for the last painting, so maybe some of you will enjoy it. Uh, here's one, very beautiful, grabs me and pulls me right into the atmosphere. 
Um, I love these. And look at these beautiful wet and wets here done just in the right timing to get the right effect and the, the ripples looking right. And we know how hard that is. These are easier because it's really uh, wet, uh, wet on dry. This dried and then uh, he put these, but these are wet and wet. They're very challenging. Look at this beautiful ripple and beautiful riggings. Just such a smart scene. I don't know. I love this one. Even though the colors aren't necessarily my cup of tea, it's very literal in a way. Uh, I find these colors to sometimes be a little boring, but not here, just up top in the building. But uh, that's really a matter of taste. Uh, let's see the next one, if it'll let me scroll. Yeah, so I love these. I've, I've seen a few of his works that are more of this kind of style, a bit of a sepia grayish filter. Uh, feels like an old photo, really. And look at all the details here. I love all of these sharp, small details. Really gives you something to look at. And it never feels in excess, to me at least. I really like how it looks. And look at the windows here. Very clever way of representing them. Um, you see the, the window, when you look at it from the side, and it maybe has this, you know, cross uh, shape of... of just I don't know what you'd call these, but this is kind of the shadow underneath them. So you can read this as two of these... Uh, horizontal lines in the window, uh, like this one. See, I don't know what you'd call this, but just the thing around the glass, like this line here. Uh, so you get these here, and the shadow underneath them is all you need to really showcase that it is a window. And all of these, um, you know, fences on the balconies, it's just such a nice work. Um, and the old cars and all of that, that's a really, really nice scene. Just I love scenes that pull you in and make you feel like you're there. That's the thing. It doesn't matter what it is. This one I had to include because it's really inventive. So you have uh, two kids basically in a suitcase pretending to be flying. I love these. And I don't know if this is from a movie or something I don't, I'm not familiar with. But if he invented it, it's even cooler. Um, and, and I don't do this kind of work almost ever. So it's really inspiring to see. And maybe I'll try something like that. So I don't know. And obviously, like, just the effect and control of the medium. Uh, the color harmony is so on point with this, these blues and browns. They very much complement each other. I love this green on the bag here as well. Just really, really nice. Uh, this one I like. This is a, a more of a typical scene in a way. But look at all of these areas blended together and done wet and wet. So much control and skill that, that it, this takes. Now, one thing I did like in particular is these light sections on the cars. Uh, and you're going to see this in another painting real soon that it's just spectacular. I love when the light is really uh, pronounced in this kind of way and in a winter scene, no less, because the road is wet. Um, so again, I love this combination. Here's the one I wanted to show you uh, with just beautiful, beautiful uh, sense of light. And it really does take a lot of skill to be able to express this kind of a thing so well. Like I can actually feel the sun burning around these clouds. Uh, it's this it's one of the scenes that I really enjoy seeing in real life. So um, just magnificent. And look at all these, you know, lines being pulled from the clouds, this beautiful visual effect uh, that, that you do very often see. I don't know how to explain it, but it's just really, really nice. It's like this, these clouds obstruct some of the light and then you get these beautiful patterns uh, through them. Here's another one I really liked. This one in particular for the sky. This combination of uh, wet and wet and smooth areas, like here as well, this cloud right around here, this cloud around here. But then in conjunction with these rough edges, maybe some of these were lifted using just tissue, like this one, this part looks to be like that. Uh, I love how these combine. The water here is, I think, more standard, even though there is a lot of challenge in that as well. But the sky is just marvelous. Really it reminds me of Sergei Temerev's work, which we reviewed a while back. Just beautiful. Here's another uh, unusual. I don't think I ever shown animal paintings in one of these episodes. So this was a really fun one to include. And you get the emotion here. There's love expressed here. There's so much. Uh, going on and and look at the technique like this was done wet in wet I guess or maybe it's not you know I, it's a bit hard to tell honestly but some of these were obviously done with the surface a little wet so they do blend together nicely a very common mistake you see especially with these kinds of references as beginners they paint everything like this you see these individual hairs 
everything is painted like that and it just looks like a big mess but here you can see the and the same for the, these hairs here so it's a very common tendency to do everything like that but when we zoom out a bit this is a beautiful combination of this kind of sharp lines and also more blended wet and wet kind of lines you see here and here in the background so uh, even just a small combination of the two can go a long way it's really important you can have most of it very scratchy and literal and show every hair and then even a small part that's a little more blended can uh, balance it out and make it look much more professional uh, and i had to finish with this one james hetfield from metallica uh, it's just such a cool one and I don't know many musicians, I'm not really that well versed, I love a lot of music, but my taste is really niche in a way, but Metallica is one band that I really enjoyed listening to and, and still enjoy uh, listening to, and I could immediately tell, oh, this is James, so this is really, really cool, the guitar as well, I believe that's what uh, his guitar looks like, um, and again, if you have these very sharp details you balance them out with some smoother details that's a good way of directing our focus uh, same for the mic here look at how blended the mic is it's just like really smooth transitions and then sharp so always have that balance in mind sharp versus soft because it is an effect that that is a staple in watercolor painting so if you can get that going it's really nice uh, plus i love the color combination um i just being able to express his face so well with few, that few lines um and 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 shapes of color is such a huge feat uh so yeah i really like this one i believe this is the last one i hope you enjoy this one let's wrap it up so thank you so much for tuning in i really appreciate it i know a lot of people have been enjoying these uh episodes and i plan on doing many many more as always leave your recommendations requests and everything uh as a comment and i will be sure to go over them and add uh, any artists that you want me to review in the future to my uh, ever-growing list of artists i plan on continuing doing these it's been a while since the last since the last episode so i wanted to do one today for you thank you so much for tuning in don't forget to drop a like as well and subscribe if you still aren't these things help me reach more and more people and i do want to get to as many people as i can help inspire in whatever way i can so thank you so much and i will see you again in the next vid